Yes, you're fine. All yes. right. Go ahead. Yes. Good to see you. Greetings. See great, you later. Yeah, great, great to uh, be back. Great to be in the mix here. Um, yeah, I wanted to give a talk on um, the thing that I, I think I'm realizing I do with all my games, which is like put it through a, a vibe pass where I, I kind of block out the games and I get them working to, to my specifications and then i'm like well i think it needs a little something i think it needs it needs this like a look or uh to, to just put it in a in a place that's particularly atmospheric and particularly um evocative and absorbing so um in in a way that that speaks to i think the music that i write and the feeling that i want players to have when they move through the space so i'm just going to kind of give you a sense of what that is in finished form. And then uh, in, in the last three of my games and my new one that's currently at a maze. And then I'm gonna break down a room from the new game. I'm gonna show you kind of how I built it up and, and how, you know, what choices I made there. So this is, um, this is kind of the opening of, and, and if people have questions, um, by all means, I don't know if I can, if, if there's a chat that I should be looking at, or, or if, if I, I do have the Zoom chat open. So if, if you could just relay some of those questions in the Zoom chat, I could definitely um, answer them in real time. Uh, but anyway, this is um, the opening of Tales from Off Peak City. And um, it's sort of deceptive. It's like there's you have water, and then you have this like opening kind of entryway into into darkness but it's not really darkness what, what i wanted to do here i think with my games it's all about framing and it's all about how do you contextualize what's there uh, i know a lot of games like to you know they, they have fun with framing but i really try to play that up so right out of the gate i'm framing this city with like wallpaper it looks like the, this is like a flooded building you have the title maybe a little lamp that also serves as a dash uh like a character a dash character and you go through it you're in this boat and you go through it it's kind of like one of those old rides in a in a theme park where you go you're in the water and you go through the entryway and then eventually this kind of misty darkness will fade away and you'll have uh the city and this is this is off peak city. This is the city that I think I all of my games are kind of set in or around or in kind of contrast to. And and it's the city is inspired by uh, New York. It's inspired by uh, where I'm from. So yeah. And for me, it was it, it's about coming into the space, like slowly riding uh, into this city, docking at this space. And then going on this journey, and and there's a few key decisions here that I made that um, don't I don't know how intentional they are up front, but I'm just going to point them out because again they all speak to the vibe of the place. The first thing I'd say the obvious things are that the buildings are all kind of look like they're painted on and kind of tweaked um, and don't follow conventional architecture but yeah i was kind of just having fun with blender kind of pulling and prodding the buildings and and kind of playing with variety um but like if you get into the real nitty-gritty um the first choice i have is that you're going up a slope i think i do this in 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 both this and the norwood suite i like the idea of you ascending you're kind of going up a mountain or the proverbial mountain and so i wanted players to feel a bit of verticality and i think verticality heightens the vibe because if this could have just been a flat street but um 
yeah, I wanted it to be something that was, let's see if I can um, find the layer here. Is this one? No. I wanted it to feel like you could look, you could arrive at a point and you actually still have more to ascend. Like even this city in the background is like kind of, um, ooh, that's good nature. Yeah, there we go. Um, even the background city feels like you keep going up. It implies further verticality, even though you can't actually go there. And then you go these side streets and there's like verticality here too. There's these canals. These canals uh, inspired by um, canals in cities like Utrecht or even Amsterdam. Um, New York has a canal. It's notoriously uh, dirty and, and polluted. I think they're cleaning it up. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of like you're going up, but then you have this almost like wound in the, in the, in the landscape, this carving um, that was used for co commercial purposes, but now it's just there for kind of aesthetic vibe. Um, no diving. Okay, so again, the vibe pass is like, everything is there both for mood and for function. So like you have these, these stairs that help you go down, but then you have the side, this sign that says no diving, which hopefully I try to have players when they play, they imagine someone would try to dive off of this into the canal. Uh, and maybe some, something bad happened when somebody tried to do that and it caused a problem. So it's like, even though you don't see any of it happening, a lot of the signage implies that it could happen or that it did happen. Um, so that's that. And then here we have another thing. It's kind of a small detail, but like I have a gradient on the street. This could have just been like a regular cobblestone street, but I wanted to give it a gradient because I liked the texture of you know, having it start in the corner very dark and then peaking. This is like a cobblestone. Like this shows that this street has history. It's worn. It's time worn. It's it maybe doesn't get a lot of traffic. In fact, let me see if I can load some traffic. Um, yeah, no traffic. It's just cars that have been parked there possibly for a very long time. So not a lot of street life, a lot of sounds. Oh yeah, this car's turned over. It kind of hints at, you know, when I released this game um, two years ago, the pandemic had just started, um, or it had kind of entered its, its sort of, oh man, we're, we're this is our reality now, and it was weird because a lot of New York felt like this. There weren't a lot of people out on the street. There were a lot of parked cars. You heard noises, but everybody was kind of just shut in, figuring out what to do. And I was like, oh, this is too weird. This is too real. This is like real life. I didn't want this to be like this, but it was what it was. So, yeah, corner of July and Yam Street. This is what street signs look like in New York. They, they have this sort of green color with the white lettering and the street and the Ave. Um, so, yeah, just trying to get the details right. Um, get the, the subway. Uh, this is what a subway stop looks like. I've modeled this after an actual subway platform. So if you see a lot of these details, I think part of the vibe pass is getting the details right and getting the little things right that people who know the city can recognize and say, oh yeah, it feels authentic. It feels lived in. It feels like, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to, to, to that. So that's, um, that's what Off Peak City looks like um so here we'll go here we'll take it back we'll take it one step back this is an exterior shot this is a vibe uh we're gonna go back to the game i did before this we're gonna go to the norwood suite um the norwood suite similar this is where i really started to, to, to figure out my vibe pass um this again playing with verticality um you start at like the base, I'll just fly around. You start at the base of the hotel. And again, I wanted people to, to feel like they were going up, like they were um, moving up towards, you know, going through this tunnel and going up this road and ascending, ascending, ascending. And then you finally arrive and you have these big doors and you open the doors and you're in and pow, that's, these are the, like the moments 
I want players to get hit with. And, and a lot of games I love do this too. It's like the reveal, the opening, the, the moment where you, you, you just see it and you're like, Ooh, okay. I've arrived. Uh, and then where do I go next? Like there's, I could go left. I could go right. I could go up. I could go wherever I want to go every which way. So that being said, few, again, a few details to, to keep in mind here. This is a low lit room and I use a lot of artificial light. I don't use a lot of natural light. I guess in the, uh, in off peak city, I did use more natural light, but it was, it wasn't, I wasn't leaning on it. Most of that, that exterior, you do end up going inside. So there's a lot of lights. There's probably way more lights in this scene than there should be. Um, even these chandeliers, I think they have like two lights on them. They, they shouldn't, these candles, again, like old candles, old chandelier, you got this smoke happening. This sways from side to side with, with smoke. You have this old, old library. Um, with, with spiral staircases. Like I, I wanted to evoke this feeling of you're in a cozy place. I think there's a coziness, like even if it's a little unusual or a little uh, mysterious, there's still a coziness factor. There's still these, like a, a library is, is by nature a cozy place. There's a fireplace. Everybody, you know, fireplaces are cozy by nature as well. Um, so let's see, what, what, what is demonstrable here? Um, wall art i think all of my games have a lot of it and some of it i kind of just hybridize from stuff that catches my fancy on the internet that i kind of tweak and pull and prod and kind of make unrecognizable or i make it from my own um th this is actually a lot of the album art on the walls like again the vibe here is these are actual albums that came out you know, 75 or whatever. And I just messed with them. In, like I hybridized them in Photoshop. I did like a, um, uh, like a collage approach. Like this is, you'll see Norwood Live 75. This is an actual record. It's probably some obscure record that is escaping me at the moment because I did this years ago. But then I've superimposed these old notes from, I think this is like medieval notation. This is from like, pre-renaissance notation because i was like oh, i want something that is like a bit of the jazz mid-70s thing um like the prog jazz thing but then i also want to point towards the uh, pre-renaissance like classical weird you know music from the ancient relatively ancient times for western music um so part of it is because i like all of it personally and part of it is because I wanted to tell this story where this person in this hotel, Norwood, he, he was somebody who drew on musical styles st spanning the ages. Um, and that was really interesting to me. And like his album art that he came out, that he came up with reflected that. So this is me using wall art in this hotel, which was formerly a mansion to tell this story about this person's life through the details in, in the actual art itself. Um, I also think a lot about, uh, someone once told me like every space should have, when I make a space, it has a hundred years of history. Think about the last hundred years, if it's that old, what happened? So I try to do that. I actually try to do that with this space like this. And, and it has like layers of history. Like, yes, this is a hotel. It has a concierge. It has people at the hotel. You know, it has a giant, you know, the key representing the, the front desk. But then it also has um, elements of the past of the person who once lived here, once used it as a mansion. So it has this, the, the old album art. It has a bar. Um, and it has hidden passageways. So yeah, it's it's sort of a multi-tiered space. Um, and let's see if I could actually pull up the the hidden passageway to, to show you very quite literally that this space is yeah secret passageways. Okay, so we've loaded a secret passageway, and uh, we're going through a tunnel. Oh, just kidding. I think there's one ready. No, maybe not. But anyway, there's um, 
there there are hid there are secrets here. There are layers of mystery um, in the space. So like if you pan out and you look and you see the whole thing, you know it was a house. You know it was a mansion. You know now that it's a hotel, and um, all of that is on display, and all of that is for you to discover. Um, parking lot. I mean, it's functional space too. So um, I'm, I'm thinking about all that. that. That gives it a bit of authenticity to what it's used now for. Um, so moving on, um, the main event, really. This is my new game. This is Betrayal at Club Low, also set at night. So again, the game opens with this kind of framing. Basically, you're, you're coming, you're, I'm reusing the subway stop that I had in, uh, in this game, I, I kind of, I like kind of bringing back former assets, partially because it saves time and partially, practically speaking, it, it reinforces that this world has many stops, many subway stops. So here we are back at the, um, you emerge from the subway stop and you're at this, this exterior shot and um, you have these, um, these buildings in the background, again, the framing of like the foreground and then the background of the buildings. Uh, and you approach the, the car and, and your mission begins. And uh, this is the same person actually that is in, take you back to the Norwood suite for those of you who have played it. It's the same person at the base of the Norwood suite. Same car, same mission, same, uh, same agenda. Uh, well, different agenda, but it's they're they're part of the same shadowy organization. So uh, you arrive. She tells you what you got to do. You got to sneak into this nightclub. So here we are. Here's the nightclub, and um, and so it goes. And there's a pizza oven right outside it. This is the same pizza oven you'll see at the Amaze space, um, in actual. So yeah, here we are. This is the space again going for a night lit mood, going for using a lot of emissive texture. I think I was a lot more um, strategic with my use of lights. I don't use a lot of shadow. I actually try to bake a lot of the shadows where possible just to save resources, um, computational resources. And because I don't really need it, I, I lean heavily on uh, screen space ambient occlusion, which is the effect where the corners of, of spaces are sort of naturally darkened. Um, and then I, yeah, I don't really use a lot of shadow. I kind of just lean into the, into the starkness of it. I, I, I don't think I need it. I don't think it's, it's essential. I think it's more about, in a scene like this, in a shot like this, it's really about the contrast of the light and the dark the punctuation of emissive windows and lights, and then the general geometry. Like if you look at this, this screen, like the geometry, I like sort of where, where lines, like there's a clear line that goes from the top left of the screen to the bottom, or sorry, the top right to the bottom left of the screen. And I just like creating, because my games aren't particularly high fidelity, I mean, they're kind of medium, Fidelity. They they um, they look like um, they don't they don't lean into like a lot of the the newer graphical tricks uh, and and capabilities. They're they're pretty much like a couple of like the metallic textures, um, the emissive texture, normal map, and then lights. It's really about light, shadow, silhouette, and framing, uh, and color, and composition of color, and um, and that's that's basically it. That's that's I try to just roll with that because it keeps the the it keeps the the overall overhead of the game relatively modest. It's easier to produce, and it lets me focus on yeah, like the the feeling and the emotion of the color of the space itself. So that I get from like just looking at this scene. Um, so I'm gonna take you into the one of the back rooms this is you know we're going through the club here this is the green room let's i'll, I'll this is where the the band waits um a living desk face desk this is the dj room it's a kind of a, it's an old it's so th again the hundred years of history this was a coffin factory this was this used to be um 
a place where coffins were made and then it got turned into a nightclub. Um, you'll see I actually have a lot of the old coffins still here because they never got they never got emptied. Um, here we have the, the turntables. We have a giant pomegranate because DJ needs to eat. We have his records. Um, we have some some wall, some some light fixture to, to help give the light space. I really like ju again juxtaposition. We have the antlers with lights. Like I just wanted to try it and and put it together. It felt it felt like the right choice. And then I repeated it. I do a lot of like repeated, you know, theme repeated. Go over there. Put it over here. Sure. If you're gonna get one antler light fixture, you're obviously gonna get a set. Um, so, you know, here, here's your other one. We'll put it above the VIP section. Here we have, um, there's a store in New York called uh, Anthropology, which you can buy like animal skulls and like insects in glass. It's like a weird kind of cool antique store, which focuses on uh, skulls and bones and stuff like that. So this is my homage to that. So we have a skull that is also a lamp. Um, instead of the horn. But here, we're gonna go into the, no un unauthorized access, we're going to the back room. So this, I'll just, I'll just break this down for you. This is the vibe pass. So this is the back room. This is the, this is the office where, here, I'll disable the UI. This is where a lot of the, um, when this was still a coffin factory, it was used as the back office. Now it's just a secret room that other nefarious things are going down in. So I'm gonna turn off the, post-processing and the light. So you can see this in kind of the unlit form. Notice I have decorated the room with some saws here. I'll, I'll disable the, the vibe additions. I have a whole scene that's like vibe additions. So this is the, the room without any vibe additions. We have a desk, we have the a power up container and just the wall. And for me, it was just about getting the lighting right, getting the, the tiling right, um, and then I baked the lighting and, you know, just kept, kept a few key points. You know, this is an elevator. So the light comes in from the back, um, maybe from the window. Um, and then I add my vibe additions. So this is just me going into this kind of blank space and saying, well, what would, what would I fill it with? So let's, let's see, I'd fill it with, this is a radio. This is where somebody's getting a secret broadcast. Um, Right, so this is a, an old advertisement for a coffin. This is an old saw. These are some other saws. I guess this, this company that made coffins, they saved all their saws. They're like, they're now like mementos. Um, this is Zorlam and Son, the first um, burial caskets and cases, um, sole proprietor. So I tried to like use these old advertisements to, to give this place that sense of like yeah stuff happened here this was an old factory and these old people um this is from the um public domain of i think these are like in real life these are like criminals in uh in australia from like the early 20th century and i just thought they they had such a striking look about them that i was just like i'll just use this in, in on the wall here. I'll just throw this in. Um, and then I have a little, when you click on this picture, it, it tells you, oh yeah. So they were, they were some of the early uh, accountant. There's an accountant and an and a inventory manager at the factory. So, um, so I put all that there. I put that on the wall. I, I staged that here, a little decal here. This is just some nice texture I got off of textures.com. I got this window. Uh, from Sketchfab, um, little uh, bit in the distance here. And then, yeah, post-processing. So what is, what is that? Um, we got the lighting and the post-processing. For this game, um, this, will, this will get a little more technical, but I'll just lay it out. So post-processing is pretty straightforward. Uh, I try not to go too fancy with the post-processing. I just try to keep things, again, like, just what it needs, no more, no less, not too many tricks, just, you know, just the right amount. It's like, you know, pesto sauce tastes amazing, but it's only made of three things and you don't really need a lot of it in your pasta. 
but it's great and you know it's great. So that's kind of my mentality here. Okay, so first of all, we have um, Bloom, a little bit of Bloom. I think I used to be a lot more Bloom happy. Um, I think in Norwood Suite, I really cranked it up very uh, early, mid 2000s vibe, but, but I, I tried to dial it back a bit. Um, tone mapping, color adjustment, lift gamma gain. I think this is, this is the, the tension here. I was kind of messing around with color here. Aces uh, was recommended as a really nice kind of color um, kind of grading. I don't quite know how this works. I just picked aces and I was like, oh, that looks cool. Like this one looks a little too bright, but this one just is, it's a bit that the contrast just felt really nice. And then post exposure, just a little bit of lift, little saturation, give it everything a little bit more intensity. And then lift gamma gain. Yeah, you just brighten everything right up. So I think honestly, I was just messing with with knobs until I settled on something that just felt right. So I lead with the feeling. I lead with the like, well, what do I want the player to feel? How do I want to feel when I look at this in this room? How do I want to feel when I'm playing this game? Um, so, I mean, this is all aside from the gameplay. This is all aside from the sort of gameplay narrative. This is just you looking into a room and saying, what is the vibe and the vibe right now is it's late at night this person's going to be watching a tennis game drinking some some red bull or blue moose in my case he's got his tennis ball pit so when he needs to chill out he can relax in there he's got that light fixture again yeah it's just another night at the club so um if you're going to be going to the club night after night you got to get the right vibe and light shadow shape, color, contrast. I think it's, I think it kind of comes down to that for me. Everything else is just tricks and techniques to get you there, to get you to the vibe. I always lead with it and I always finish with it. So there it is. Um, thank you. Uh, I guess I'll just, um, to people, I don't know, does anyone have questions or uh, is that even a thing? <laughs> hey yeah we have questions thank okay. you thank you so <laughs> thank you much, so much. <laughs> it was uh, fantastic thank you for the good vibe and uh, um, as well for the insight uh, it's Cheers. extremely interesting yeah especially because of um, you're mostly working alone right all the games you do yeah, alone I yeah on, when it comes to this aspect uh, yeah I pretty much work on my lonesome lonesome so um, we asked this question as well before, right? I mean, is this the thing to work alone or is it something what you just find out that it's not easy for an artist mind to work in a team or, I don't know, otherwise you That's lose control or something about your, your, your story? When I worked on Off Peak City, I collaborated with Julian who, uh, his game was at a maze in 2018 with Norwood Suite. We met there. Uh, we collaborated. He worked on the camera for that. That was, that was awesome. I mean, I think there's definitely a time and a place and opportunity to join forces with other people. Uh, I am, I'm a cellist by, by training and, and, you know, I'm a support, I'm a collaborator at heart. Uh, and I think this game even though I worked on it alone, I had a lot of people play test it. I got, I got, I was getting feedback, all my games, you know, feedback all along, always a constant steady stream. So I don't feel like the game is being made in isolation. I do feel like these sorts of choices, like the vibe pass, this is the kind of thing that I do decide to do in a certain degree of solitude, in a certain degree of like, I'm kind of just, it's late at night and I want to mess around and I want to like capture a feel. I could see it working with the team. I've seen wonderful stuff come from teams. It was just, that's what, the, and I could see this, you know, with collaborators that I, that I trust and inspire me, this could be built, this could grow into something beyond. I, I'm, this is, this is a question that other people could potentially answer and, and add to. And uh, it's, it's an open dialogue, but for this particular one, yeah, I, I did the, the vibe pass alone. So right but it doesn't then. have to be alone. I don't yeah. think it has to be alone. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, is there 
um, any other artists that uh, you enjoy the vibe from? Ooh. Um, yeah, I love, I mean, I'm kind of on the spot answer. Early influence for me when I was really young, I was taken to an Edward Hopper exhibit. So I saw, and, and it really struck me, Edward Hopper, mid-century uh, American painter, painted a lot of like city, long shadows, cities, uh, early mornings, um, people alone. I mean, Nighthawks at the Diner being sort of his iconic painting, but like a lot of his work I, I was really struck by. So him, um, who else? Uh, I guess Wong Kar Wai, I love his movies. Like I love the mood that he's always achieved in like some of his, you know, iconic movies like Fallen Angels or um, In the Mood for Love, like the way that he captured lighting in that movie. You know, those are things that I saw when I was really young and they influenced my, my look, um, stayed with me. Uh, and then just like walking, like architecture, walking in around in New York, seeing the different buildings, old and new, obviously being in Grand Central, um being being in the in the presence of like old history of the city i i mean even and visiting berlin too i felt that so strongly like being in a place where you see it's kind of like hundreds of years of history like condensed on top of one another and it has to function um but yeah i i i'll just say if, if i need to give a short answer i would say right now um hopper and uh uh, Wong Kar Wai. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, if people have more questions, we have a Discord Q&A um, channel. So uh, you can ask uh, Cosmody some questions there if you like, and he might answer. <laughs> I'll certainly answer. Yes. I'll, I'll be around. <laughs> okay. Sure. Excellent. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And uh, see you later. Absolutely. See you later. Bye-bye. Good luck for, for your awards. <laughs>